Hello everyone, welcome to my late night video with Antibeta 1M. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my status as an anti-breeder and what that name means. I used it uh, in a particular Facebook group and stirred a bit of controversy because people identified me then as being a virgin incel. So a virgin is someone who's never had sex, which is true. And incel is short for involuntary celibate, is someone who is kind of angsty about not being able to get a girlfriend or something, which is probably a good, a fair enough description of me. So I'm going to accept that label. But um, I want to try and justify why I believe that being a virgin incel is really part of my psyche. And it's not as straightforward and as simple as it first appears to be. So the most important contextual factors causing me to be a virgin insular are the state of the world and my personal circumstances. So we live in a terrible world and I've just emphasised the fact that, you know, um, antinatalism is, is part of my philosophy because we live in a world which is conducive to negative, negative experiences. And that's the slightly harder side of my, of my antinatalism. There is a softer side which says that we should be much more conservative of the planet, preservative of the planet, and not breed in, in excess of what we really do need to, and, and to really enjoy those children that we do choose to breed. But the state of the world is such that it's really, really problematic for future generations, and the current generation in particular, uh, to deal with. If we don't solve the problem now, it's going to get even worse for future generations. But um, in terms of the state of the world, there's something else that I brought up in Facebook, which I wanted to discuss here. And that was the idea that we should create greater solidarity with the animals, the suffering farmed animals in particular, that we can do nothing about, um, that we can't save very easily, that are being exploited on and on. And we're doing everything we can to stop them from suffering, but we can't stop that suffering. So how can we ourselves do something that will um, somehow atone for and, and morally come to terms with um, that kind of suffering, which we seem, which it seems we can do nothing about. And my idea was that we should abstain uh, from sex uh, for the reasons of the fact that, for example, dairy cows aren't able to have sex consensually of their own accord. They live in an environment where they're artificially inseminated, artificially inseminated and impregnated, where they have their children stolen from them. And eventually they have their children killed and they themselves are killed for, 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 for beef and steak. So in order to create solidarity with those animals, the best thing that we can do as humans is perhaps to abstain from sex ourselves. Um, this is something that was very controversial, and I think it had some good discussions in Vegan Debate, the Facebook group Vegan Debate, um, in the last few days. But I wanted to bring it up because <clears throat> it's a very personal thing, and I think a lot of people get offended by, by the, how personal that, that sort of decision actually is. I don't think many people would actually stop me from abstaining, abstaining from sex if that was my choice, but a lot of people themselves would have great inhibitions from doing that because they feel that it's something that um, is extremely sort of alien to what they would ever choose to do in real life. So, you know, having sex is a natural thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with having sex. You know, it's a pleasurable activity. But I want to bring back the element of self-sacrifice. You know, what it, you know, I think, you know, I'm talking about Jesus as well, Jesus Christ, which I don't really subscribe to. But... The idea of Jesus is self-sacrifice. So Jesus sacrificed his life in order to atone us for our sins. And not that I'm a Christian person, but I think that idea carries across in the sense that we can sacrifice something of our own in order to atone for the suffering of others and to bring ourselves closer and more empathetic to the suffering of others, such as dairy cows. Um, some people brought up the fact that we are not like dairy cows, that we should just live our lives and do what we can to just be vegan, for example. I don't regard that as being the ultimate um, sort of measure that we can take in order to, 
bring ourselves as close as possible to the animals. Being close to the animals means understanding their suffering from an emotional level as well as an intellectual level. If we only understand it and understand their suffering intellectually, we are not understanding their are suffering fully. So, you know, I just wanted to bring up that idea of self-sacrifice and the idea of sexual abstinence as an idea of um, as an idea of creating self-sacrifice in our own world. Being a minimalist is definitely part of that. Being a minimalist is a huge way towards um, conserving environmental resources and stopping suffering in its tracks as far as we possibly can. But um, I always want to raise the bar and I think that bringing up the idea of sexual abstinence is something that we, sh we should definitely talk about. But it's not just sexual abstinence, it's other things like having fewer, you know, having no friends, having um, what else? Having not cho being able to choose the food that we have, that we are able to eat. All of these things are for the animals. The same sort of predicament is is handed out to the animals, and we should be aware that this is something that we should atone to. And you know, this is something that I suggest we can do in our own lives to perhaps become closer to the animals, is by choosing to fast on certain days. Um, there's a group called um, Animals First on the Second. You can Google that, you can find it on Facebook, where they fast on the second day of each month in order to be to bring animals first and to bring up to light the plight of the animals themselves. Um, and of course, the animals don't get to choose the food that they eat. Sometimes they're spot with good food, um, especially sanctuary animals, where the, where the owners of sanctuaries take great measures to treat their animals well. <clears throat> but farm animals get the worst food, they eat grass, they eat soy, they eat all the crabby food. So in order to understand that emotionally as well as intellectually, I think that we should consider fasting and or abstaining from certain foods at certain times. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is going to go very far. I think it's a lot of people will call me weird and outrageous and, you know, doing things which are potentially self-harmful and I totally understand that. I also believe that um, it's worth discussing and I think the debate about it is very important. So that's why I brought it up. <clears throat> so other things include my personal circumstance. I think that um, grieving about my personal circumstance is something that I would naturally be inclined to do. As I've mentioned numerous times on this channel, I'm an involuntary client of Mental Health Authority and their service, which means that I involuntarily take drugs. And I think in order to grieve that process, in order to come to terms with that process, it involves, with my sense of moral agency and my duty to myself, it involves some form of self-sacrifice as well. Uh, well, it can well involve certain forms of self-sacrifice. Um, so, but I, I suppose it's not, I, I don't sub subscribe to the philosophy of being, of being perpetually negative. I believe that self-sacrifice and being, you know, having the lifestyle of a monk, for example, um, can teach us a lot. And it's, I think, a Buddhist precept. Uh, one of the, some of the Buddhist precepts involve self-sacrifice in various ways, um, which is not quite so popular as it is, as it used to be. In, uh, when Buddhism was, in, or as, as it is in certain parts of the world, but um, if we are to come to terms with our grief, I think that um, atoning for our suffering by abstaining from certain things and, and formulating a way of suffering in, in contained and controlled ways may be an answer for some people. Um, there's an example with James Espy, a quite prominent animal rights activist who decided that he would not speak for a year, an entire year, in protest against the treatment of animals. This turned, up to, to, this turned out to be quite a successful protest because a lot of people took notice of what he was doing. And it didn't, it wasn't an act of self-harm but particularly, but it showed people a lot about how much he cared about the animals. And I think that we should take that measure and raise the bar in terms of our, our, our animal rights advocacy. <clears throat> so, in conclusion, the actual reasons why I am a virgin in cell and why I choose to abstain from sex and so on 
are very complicated and they're not quite as uninteresting as you might firstly think. Um, being a virgin incel has far less to do with incompetence on my part than it has to do with coming to terms with the inherent injustices and inequalities that exist in this world. So I hope I've given you something to think about. If you've got any comments for me and you think that I'm doing something which is interesting or outrageous or weird or fanciful or even really, really good, then let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.